Good morning. I'm Cody Robert Judy, and this is a voice crying in the wilderness. Repent, ye repent, for the coming of the Lord. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Today is uh, September 9th, 2018. 9 9 2018. Good to be with you. A little chilly this morning. It's about, I think it's about 7.15 in the morning. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm just done. I'm just done. I think about that so often. I'm running for U.S. Senate, Utah. I'm a write-in candidate. You can write my name in, Cody Judy, C-O-D-Y, J-U-D-Y. As I was saying, sometimes I think I'm just done. I ain't got anything else left to say. And then the Lord hits me with, you got to say this. You know, I would apologize for some of my videos being so long, but there's just no other way to get around to it. And actually, when you uh, consolidate um, things that have taken years and years and years to develop, you'd understand that a few hours is actually consolidating pretty pretty good in the news today Barack Obama is out there and you probably heard some of the comments that he's made towards the Trump administration well, I have one thing to say to Democrats. Barack Obama has been paying Donald Trump about $2 million a day since he's been in office. In free publicity. Y'all know Donald Trump gained his base as a birther, which is good. Standing up for the Constitution, the qualifications of the office of the president is not a bad thing. I don't know anybody in their right mind who would say that's a bad thing. Especially if you consider yourself American. What is American? It's those who are citizens that fall under the jurisdiction of the United States Constitution. That's what being American is all about. I sued Senator John McCain and Senator Barack Obama. There's nothing racial or color oriented about the standard of our Constitution. And the office of the president demands a natural, as a, a, d demands a natural born citizen or a citizen at the time of the adoption of the Constitution. Two types of citizens. Those who are naturalized, which means they, come, they fall under a statute. Those who are born in the U.S. of foreign parents, they fall under the statute of law. It's called the 14th Amendment. That did not eliminate the qualifications for the office of the president. It didn't supersede natural born citizens.
John McCain had two acts of Congress. One act of Congress recognized him as a citizen six months after he was born in Panama, not at a naval base. If it was at a naval base, he wouldn't have had to have an act of Congress, right? Right, don't be stupid. Donald Trump's right about one thing. In many instances, Democrats are really stupid. They've allowed Barack Obama to pay Donald Trump about $2 million a day worth of publicity since he's been standing up as birther. Democrats were just too stupid to think it would propel him to the office of the president. That's what they're so furious about. They financed him. I'm not the only one saying that. Check this out. The only reason that we have an outsider businessman president is because of you, your lies, your policies, and your divisiveness. You, Barack, you elected Donald Trump, and there is nothing you can do about the fact that he's sitting in the Oval Office now. So I guess I should say, thank you, Barack. That's the truth. Judge Janine Piero. She knows what she's talking about. Democrats, I mean, what was Barack Obama doing to America? He was encouraging globalism. That means he was bending over and grabbing his ankles with trade deals with China, with Russia, North Korea, Selling our souls out, selling America's soul out. You think globalism is is cool? What does that in What does that invoke, in, on a business sense? That invokes an unfair trade advantage. What is an unfair trade advantage? It's the employment of slave labor, foreign slave labor. They say they're against corporations making a big profit. They were the institution allowing big corporations to make the big profit. By providing enough incentive with unfair trade that our American corporations took their factories over to other countries so they could pay them 85 cents an hour. No health care. No working conditions. It was a profit-making scheme. That used and employed slave labor. If Democrats had their head on straight, they would understand that. And then, you know, once people come over here from all over the world and become lawful American citizens and come in legally, guess what? They want protections. They want jobs. They want health care. They want good working conditions. As soon as you become a U.S. citizen, You don't want our corporations employing slave labor. You don't want to work for slave labor. That's what you fled from. Obama was promoting that. That's stupid.
and he usurped the Constitution by saying he was a qualified candidate, and he wasn't. He was not born in the U.S. to U.S. citizen parents. That's the definition, narrowly interpreted, of a natural-born citizen. Everything else, born outside the U.S., born to a foreign parent, comes under a naturalization statute. I'm a natural-born citizen. I don't need an act of Congress to tell me that. This, this identity crisis, this identity politics, is tearing America apart. And they used racial demoguery, racial demoguery, to get Obama in office. They used the color of his skin not the character and content of his character. Not values, not principles. They use the color of his skin. If you use character and values and someone's willingness to stand up against all odds, I would have been president in 2008 if that was important to you. And the fact that it wasn't popular enough and the fact that the fake news covered up the legal cases, they won't even recognize my cases on Obama's profile under the birther issue. Oh yeah, we had a presidential candidate that sued both Senator McCain and Senator Obama. Because guess what? It takes their racial demoguery and throws it in the toilet and flushes it. Because all of a sudden there's a standard that's above white and black, doesn't matter what color you are. I've been screwed by white and black. There's both, there's both good and bad in every color. Both good and evil. You know that. Black people know that. White people know that. Now, the last suit I took Obama to, I also sued him on the it, with the Sherman and Clayton X because of the DNC and his OFA corporations being combined as a cartel in an illegal action, an illegal act. I told you about that in the last video. I've also told you about my being screwed by white deception. That was not only McCain, but also Gordon B. Hinckley. My criminal court judge said, you have to go sue the LDS church presidency if you want the evidence that's been used against you in a court of law. The videotape. The prosecution had it. They showed it to the judge. I have a right to it. The public had a right to it. KTVX. Spent $10,000 trying to get it. At one of my parole hearings. Because it was public. It was a public case. It was, it was, it was had by the parole department. Now, I sued Gordon B. Hinckley, like the, my criminal court judge told me I had to do to get my evidence. 
And that went clear to the U.S. Supreme Court in case 96-76-55. There it is. That's certiorari's denied in the U.S. Supreme Court, 1996. Now that was a $500 million case. I can't think of a greater evil that totally disintegrates our Constitution than a union of church and state in a criminal action. A particular denomination and the state combined in a prosecution seeking to frame a defendant and violating the Constitution in that framing I made a comparison here. Athletes make a lot of money every year. And I, I looked up and I found the highest paid athlete was boxer Floyd Merriweather. He leads the way for the fourth time in seven years in 2018. His fight versus UFC kingpin Conor McGregor generated 4.3 million pay-per-view buys. Mayweather's role as the promoter and as the A-side of the fight pushed his paycheck to $275 million. Added $10 million for total earnings, $285 million. Mayweather, Cristiano, Ronaldo and Tiger Woods are the only three athletes to top the highest paid list over the past 18 years. I made this little picture. That's a great white deception. Judy versus Hinckley. 96, 75, 76, 55. <clears throat> now what was that case all about? That case was all about prosecuting in a religious meeting a prophet that came with a chastisement from the Lord Jesus Christ. A chastisement of the breaking of the new and everlasting covenant. If you're a Christian and you love Abraham, you'll love Abraham's works. Now, if you're an Abraham hater, I don't think you want to be counted as the children of Israel, do you? This is the Book of Mormon, B-O-M. If you were prophets, you'd know that. What the B-O-M is. And you certainly wouldn't use this in a prosecution in a state case. You do everything in your power to defend a chastisement, chastisement from the Lord, a chastening from the Lord. Do you know why? Because as long as the Lord is chastening you, He loves you. There's a chance for you. Now the reason I use that big great white shark in the background because I had a dream about Gordon B. Hinckley. And he, when I was in prison, he was a great white shark. Here I am. 
He was a great white shark coming up like that, snapping at me. But he missed. You ever had a great white shark after you? Those who have know it is a terrifying experience. That new show came out. That new show came out, Meg. Terrifying. I have stood up against the greatest powers in the world today that have perverted the words of the Lord and inspired holy writ. The Constitution of the United States and God's word and promise of the new and everlasting covenant What can we read in the Book of Mormon about that? Let's see. For in 2 Nephi, verse, uh, chapter 27, verse 31. For assuredly as the Lord liveth, they shall see that the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off and they that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside a just for a thing of naught therefore saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Let's go to third Nephi. Chapter 27, verse 26. And behold, all things are written by the Father. Therefore, out of the books which shall be written shall the world be judged. And know ye that ye shall be judged of this people according to the judgment which I shall give unto you, which shall be just. Therefore, what manner of man ought ye to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. Now I want to go to uh, just the next page, 3rd Nephi. Let's see here. Maybe we'll go to Third Nephi. Oh, we read that one, twenty seven thirty two. Now that compares to uh, Isaiah twenty nine thirty one. 
So let's go over to the, the book of Isaiah and go uh, to 29, chapter 29, verse 21. First, let me read Isaiah 28, uh, verse 12. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. And I'll say this, New Jerusalem, state of Utah. Because ye have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell, are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. That's the prosecution. With the state and church illegal union. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also. It's one of my campaign slogans, justice. If you don't believe in justice, then you believe in injustice. And you're opposed to me. Judgment also will I lay to the line. It's not going to be compromised. And righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disanaled. Your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then ye shall be trotted down by it. Remember that promise of Malachi? You might need it. Where the Lord says, I will rebuke the devourer if you act righteously. Every voter. You know, the shepherds, they got double coming. Maybe triple, maybe quadruple. Because they're leading the sheep astray. But that's in a church, any particular church. We're talking about your responsibility as a voter in the political arena from the time that it goeth forth it shall take you for morning by morning shall it pass over by day and by night and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report if you don't understand this plain and simple language plain and simple law anybody can understand it for the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it you won't have a blanket you don't have a blanket to cover it the Lord sees it he knows it 
You know it. That's why you've made a covenant with death and hell. He knows that. So what's he promising as your reward? A scourge. An overflow of water. Particularized. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work. His strange work. And bring to pass his act. His strange act. Now therefore be ye not mockers. Lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts in a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. Give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Doth the plowman plow all day to sow? Doth he open and break the clods of his ground? When he hath made plain the face thereof, doth he not cast abroad the fitches, and scatter the cumin, and cast in the principal wheat, and the appointed barley, and the rye in their place? Do you think you can escape the seeds that you have planted? Are they for a scourge? Are they for a covering of water and death? And hell. I did 3,018 days in a framed case. Framed. An unlawful prosecution. Do you think the Lord has forgot about that? Do you think that your blanket covered it up? Do you think 25, 26, 27 years provided you a blanket for that. I'm running for U.S. Senate as a write-in candidate. You can write my name in. Cody, C-O-D-Y, Judy. You can make your contributions. You can pay your tithes and your offerings. Come out of the churches. I want to explain something to you. You can't make unrighteous decisions and get away with it. The Lord is talking to you. You can't plant seeds of hell. You can't plant seeds, seeds of outer darkness and seeds of damnation and escape the justice of the Lord. You just can't do it. He created the heavens. He created the earth and all that are in them. I'm here pleading, pleading for your cause, pleading even for those who have passed on who are suffering that. And in your confession to God for forgiveness from not only your sins but your fathers and their fathers and their fathers to break the chain of violence and abuse domestic violence 
against the laws of the land against the new and everlasting covenant to break that the people that have passed on are begging you to make restoration what is part of repentance to make a confession to make things right where things had been wrong, a restitution, and then resolve not to do it again. It's not that hard. And believe me, $500 million from the LDS Church Presidency Corporation and $140 million from the DNC and Obama's OFA is nothing that is that is a token of restitution for the offenses against the Lord I'm telling you you think you set a trap for me you have no idea of the trap waiting for you and the Lord says, they will fall in their, the, the traps that they have made. Isn't this coming to pass? Isn't this happening right now? It is. And what am I doing? I am pleading for you and your sakes and your fathers and their fathers who have passed on and their fathers who are also pleading as a voice from the dust please make a restitution make the things right that were wrong that we wronged in our life because we are suffering outer darkness we are suffering hell we are suffering damnation we are weeping. We're not in the celestial kingdom. We're not with the Lord because we violated the Lord's new and everlasting covenant. We violated the supreme law of the land. They are confessing. We are evil doers. We have been caught in the traps that we set up and are suffering and we don't want you to have to suffer that because there's weeping and gnashing of teeth literally weeping of regrets and I am out here pleading with you send don't support the evil anymore come out of the churches who have set up hell and damnation who are blind who are in the darkness and who are leading into darkness those who follow come into the light relieve your fathers who have passed on relieve Gordon B. Hinckley Relieve Howard W. Hunter. They are suffering outer darkness, eons. Relieve them, make restitution. Now, they are pleading to me for you to make restitution and repent. I don't care what color you are. You're all under the Lord's judgment. The Lord, our righteousness, the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah, the Jehovah, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, the King. He has established this land. He has established this law. And He has let you out on a line 
with a hook that's going to yank you to that kingdom come. I am not speaking to make your offense. I am speaking to make your saving grace for your qualification of mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ. That is love. I am the good coach preparing you for the game, chastening you because I have hope for you. As soon as that hope is done, judgment seal. Justice is not moot. Yeah. I have suffered your iniquities. I have suffered your sins. They have been put upon me. But this life is just a little while. Eternity comes. And I want you to enjoy eternity in the Lord's kingdom. You got to change. You got to have passion for righteousness. It's that passion that wins. It may suffer a few losses, even as I have suffered a few losses. I suffered a loss of the 90s. I lost a lot of my youth. Those are important years. 27. When I, February 7, 1993, I was 27 years old. I was incarcerated for 8.2 years. Four years of parole. Constantly afflicted by even my own family. Loss of my children, loss of my wife. Loss of my employment. Loss of my homes. But that is a small price to pay for the testimony of the Holy A man who came to earth, my son, even Jesus Christ, the most intelligent of all the intelligences. <laughs>